Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the Tarot portion and the second half of my daily astrology vlog, which you can check out on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. Over there, you can find a detailed description of the day's astrological aspects. I will put the link in the description. Here, I will discuss the Tarot card that sits on the side of the page. Then I'll play another card that, in the context of today's astrology, may give us something more to think about. So let's get into it. The card that currently sits on the side of the page is the Ten of Pentacles, and it is there because it relates to the final 10 days or the third decan of the sun's transit in the land of Virgo. So Virgo is an earth sign and Pentacles in Tarot are earth element symbolism too. And earth element symbolism is basically just about the physical resources you possess and what you're willing to do with them, give of them, what work you're willing to do to create a sense of security and stability and support in your life and for the lives of your loved ones. And so we come to the Ten of Pentacles. And here we see sort of the ultimate expression of, of material security, right? It, to me, it's as though this person just came home. The 10 is sort of the end, uh, the end of the path in Pentacles. So this person just came home, and what they arrived to is the fact that, you know, their home is standing. It's, it's well appointed. They've got roofs and archways and floors. They've got a nice family there waiting for them. So, you know, it's not just about having the things, but it's about uh, supporting the people that we care about. They've got their dogs, their children, their spouse, maybe, you know, their father-in-law or something there, <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, this is the ultimate feeling of physical security in, in the world. And it's not just about what the money can buy in terms of stuff and things. It is about what uh, the, what the money can be used for in order to support us in a way where we feel like secure and at home and welcome and, and uh, you know, uh, supported. So that's the Ten of Pentacles. I want to add here that Ten of Pentacles also sometimes relates to an inheritance that we might receive or, or something like that. But really, it just represents the fact that we've put in a lot of uh, work that somebody has put in a lot of work, somebody has given a lot of their wisdom and their time and even their body to the labor of creating this security. And now they're at that ultimate expression of this security. So congratulations if you're there. It, congratulations if you come home to a nice home with a, with a happy family and, and find that you have not just everything you need, but the things that you desire to. And understand also that this is 10 it's the end of a path so when we come to this point it's sort of a good time to sit back and reflect and and appreciate what it is that we have um, and friends even if you're not at that 10 of pentacles point yet or you don't feel that you're at that 10 of pentacles point yet I encourage you to still feel gratitude for what you have and uh, to to remember that all of your needs and desires are met okay it's it's okay to it's it's enough to be sort of um uh, happy with what you have and also working for bigger and better things. So that's the Ten of Pentacles. Um, it's the end of the path. So at some point you're going to have to take this, you know, ultimate resource that you've built for yourself and start over in some way or make a new start or, you know, sort of like uh, level up to the level of community support or or reinvest your your money so that you can start a new uh, venture in life and create more support for yourself. Because that support is ongoing and it needs and, and it requires, it's always going to require effort and attention. And with that said, we got the Eight of Wands. We've got, been getting a lot of wands lately. I, I wonder if they're trying to speak specifically to me because I am a fire sign. <laughs> I do have, I do have a, a few planets in Aries actually. <laughs> so um, let's see. Eight of Wands is about fire. It's about drive, determination, sort of excitement, uh, impetuousness, impatience even, restlessness. And I love the Eight of Wands because it's really just that feeling like you've got a full tank and an open highway and a nice day to take a drive and you can get where you are going. Like, go ahead. It's momentum. It's not even initiative necessarily. It's not even a start. It's like we are in the middle and we are moving forward, okay? Full speed ahead. Not, not a blue light in sight. <laughs> 
So, you know, speaking of fire and speaking of wands as they relate to the page today, we do have Mars in a, in this squared off position with Venus's opposition to Neptune. Now, Venus in opposition to Neptune, oppositions usually come across as a potential for conflict, but Venus in opposition to Neptune is like, you know, uh, how, how can your sense of, how can your receptive, open, attracting things that you like, love, and can't get enough of heart uh, feel in conflict about what's about the content of your dreams right <laughs> so neptune is about your dreams and i'm not just talking about like the dreams you have when you're at night but like the the ideal circumstances that you can imagine for yourselves like if you had the four billion dollars in the bank already what is it that you would you know how would you live where would you live what would you be doing right so uh it's okay to imagine those things and especially you know neptune is retrograde right now so it's absolutely okay to imagine those we, we get some crystal clarity about what it is that would be ideal for us and venus is just like oh yes i see what's ideal there venus is also in this grand trine with uranus and pluto saying uh yeah we can go through these changes we can go we can definitely move in the direction of our dreams right and then mars is square here and the square is not really so negative either i think it just implies action action or or, you know, sort of initiative, um, uh, sort of putting things in motion, right? We can't just sort of Venus style sit back and wait for our dreams to come to us, right? When the opportunity arises, we, you know, we have to stand up and, you know, put up our hand and grasp the opportunity, right? So um, there is that. Mars is working with Venus and Neptune to help us gain some momentum in the direction of the ideal circumstances that we dream of for ourselves mars is also you know square to venus while being sextile to chiron chiron is about healing and mars and venus square together is often sort of about the interpersonal relationships we have with our closest partners especially like you know a, a spouse or or a sweetheart that kind of thing um but also maybe with you know somebody we, we work with it's about a complementary pair of people you know like uh, two people that work together who, you know, like one person's strengths is kind of the other person's weaknesses and they make up for one another, right? We, they complement one another um, and they sort of take up one another's slack where it needs to be, where it needs to be. So this square between Venus and Mars can say, yeah, we're going to show you some of the cracks, some of the conflicts, some of the uh, some of the challenges that are coming up in that relationship. But Mars is sexed out of Chiron says Mars is feeling very active and cooperative about wanting to mend any rifts that we have, uh, you know, with the people who are important to us in our lives. So, um, you know, it, it Mercury is retrograde. So, you know, I would normally just say, hey, talk about it. But listen, you can still talk about it. You just have to be really careful to also listen to what the other person says, right? Don't go charging in and thinking that you can solve all the problems just by saying what you have to say. Uh, it's a partnership, whatever that partnership is in your life, it's a partnership. And so both people have to have a say and both people have to be heard. And I'm saying that especially to my fire sign friends because we don't always listen too well. We, we kind of feel like we know and we know what we know and it's right, period. <laughs> so, you know, sort of no need to worry about what this other person thinks. We've got it right. It's okay, you know. Uh, no, definitely worry about what the other person thinks in that relationship and, pl and please, you know, give them your ear and be willing to actually take the actions uh, to bring you both toward a more ideal way of cooperating with one another. Chiron and Jupiter over here at Aries saying, clear out the clutter, the inside, on the inside, let go of some of these old defenses, shove some of these old cinder block walls out of here because we are making room for uh, the bigger possibilities for our life. We are making room in our hearts and minds to hold the concept of the, the worldwide travel we'd like to do, or the big house on a hill we'd like to live in, or the, you know, the fancy car that we would like to drive, or whatever that ideal circumstance is for you, whatever that, uh, whatever that symbol is that represents that you have, um, sort of leveled up, right? So that you have sort of, uh, you know, moved in the direction of your dreams and your ideal circumstances. Um, 
you know, Jupiter is asking us, helping us right now, really make room for those bigger possibilities in our, in our hearts and minds on the inside. And the moon, of course, is in Leo today. So that's another fire sign. Uh, moon in Leo is a time when we feel pretty fabulous and confident about ourselves. Like we, we know very well what we know and we're going to uh, sort of, <laughs> I wouldn't say give till, the, till it hurts, but Leo uh, is represented by the sun and really cannot help but give what it gives. It cannot help but shine. It can't help but be good at what it what it's good at, and it can't help but share with other people. So uh, we're kind of being kind of in that mode in uh, you know in the internal life with the moon, which is your heart and your home and your body and the way you interact with the people that you love. So just understand that you know also when the moon is in Leo. We have this fiery desire for some appreciation and, and uh, you know, attention for all the good things that we bring. And if you're not finding it, a good idea would be to give somebody else notice, <laughs> notice and give somebody else the appreciation that you are looking for. OK, it can be it can it can engage some reciprocity along those lines if you do that. Taken together with the Ten of Pentacles, it's like it's like. It's almost like, you know, I mean, I said that this is a good time to sit back and appreciate what you have. And maybe you have been sitting back and appreciating what you've had a little bit. Maybe you have been sitting at home and appreciating your family. Um, but the Eight of Wands says we are still in motion, right? So even though we've made this homecoming, even though we have, you know, uh, cleared this goal where we feel like we have the ultimate expression of material security in our lives with our homes and our, and our families around us. Uh, we are still in motion. We don't ever really get to stop. You can stop and rest. You can stop and reflect. You can think about what you want to do next. But we are still in motion as long as we are alive. So keep that momentum going, friends. Don't fritter away what you have earned here. Reinvest it in some way, right? Reinvest it, say, in your community. Reinvest it in a, uh, maybe a, a run for office. Or reinvest it, you know, uh, in something that that represents longer term security for yourself or your family there's there's always more to be done you don't just get to sit down and go whoo i did that and i'm not doing anything else <laughs> right <laughs> uh, not until the end of your life and then nobody will blame you but uh for most of us this is not the end of our lives so we get to stay in motion we get to keep doing what it is that we do to create security for ourselves in our lives and when we have reached that ultimate expression we also get to uh you know again stay in motion and keep reinvesting our resources so that our security is is built even more our networks for security are built any more e even more our families are stronger and our communities are stronger because of our involvement and because of our momentum our willingness to work Earth and fire is always always comes across to me as as work. So uh, there's more work to do, friends. And I think that's all I have to say about it today. I surely do appreciate your presence here. My name is Mel Rose, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more astrology today and tarot.